Hunger Dwasa really wanted to integrate architecture into nature. I think that has been often before in history, but now may, maybe not so much nowadays. If you think of, of Baroque castles, they are also piece of art and piece of nature. But uh, then after World War II, buildings became more and more ugly and people were living in very high houses. They couldn't, cannot identify with the spot where they live because everything is equal. And so Hundertwasser thought uh, everything should be more like an integration of man and nature. And he thought the street line is godless and immoral. That's what he said. And uh, we should have all the roofs green. In our house, all the roofs are green. He says everywhere where snow and rain falls, it should be green. We need more nature also in the big cities. And actually man is like a piece of nature. And what we see here is uh, that he integrates old iron parts. And this is uh, a way we should live. We should recycle things. And here he demonstrates, for example, this old spiral or yeah, many old tools and so on. And he thinks uh, that recycling is important. He himself recycled a lot. When he was young, he reused old fabric and made out of that, for example, a sleeping bag or clothes. Beauty was a very big aspect in his life. He thinks when we look at nature, we think this is beautiful and we need beauty. He grew up opposite a uh, factory and had all equal houses, uh, all, all equal windows he had there. And uh, he thinks it's a uh, human right to see nature, to see something beautiful when you look out of your window. He's not an art, an architect. He, uh, he learned everything by himself. And of course, he had to work together with architects. In our case in Vienna, it was Peter Pelikan, a Viennese architect. During the war and before, uh, this modern art around 1900, Art Nouveau was uh, in uh, Nazi time, in Hitler time, was called Entartete Kunst. I don't know the English term, so it was not possible to see these things. It was not allowed to show, to display. So his first inspirations were painters like uh, Rudolf Alt. This is a painter who painted uh, views of the city, Veduten. The very first before was that he started to paint the flowers he had picked together with his mother on weekends when they were in the Vienna woods. And then they were pressed by him and then they lost color. And so he started to paint them. That was the beginning. Then there was Rudolf Alt. Then when finally it was possible to see modern art in Albertina, he saw Schiele Klimt. He also saw a German painter named Walter Kampmann who painted the so-called soul trees. And then when he went on uh, his journeys after he had left the academy in Italy, he saw all the old art. He was very fascinated by Giotto in Siena and, and many others of, of these old uh, painters before Renaissance. He helped people already uh, decades ago when they wanted to have um, green plants growing along the wall, uh, climbing plants, and uh, maybe the house owner didn't want it. Hundertwasser helped them to have this kind of uh, plant decoration on the house. Yeah, and he calls these trees uh, tree tenants, Baum Mieter. And uh, so when he had made several of these speeches for more green in the cities, uh, the Lord Mayor of Vienna in uh, those times asked Hundertwasser to, to show how a house could work with more green in the cities and how he would imagine a house. So the first one was the Hundertwasser house close by. 
And then came this house because Hundertwasser House is so crowded by tourists that he thought there should be a possibility for tourists to go in. And now we have Kunsthaus Wien. And uh, yeah, you had asked me about inspirations in the architecture. I had mentioned the Schrebergarten, those little houses with uh, very individual gardens, but there is more, there is much more. It's also our old castles, ruins where the trees start to grow on and uh, just old farmhouses. They have trees around the house. He thinks this is way more organic and he loved the organic uh, architecture of Gaudí in Spain. We have Hundertwasser House. It's a project that Hundertwasser made for the city of Vienna. And uh, yeah, you see uh, many colors. It means one color is one flat. So he thought it's nice, like in a little old village, to have different houses all together. He even kept uh, or rebuilt a part of the pre existing house here. It was nice how he put it to invite the spirits of the old house to transfer to the new one. So this was uh, built between 83 and 85 and uh, is, it was for the community of Vienna on invitation of the Lord Mayor of Vienna. And uh, yeah, again, he didn't build it alone. He had an architect to his side that was important. But uh, he made a matchbox model beforehand with these terraces that are uh, going down from the top to, to here. And so these are all green roof terraces. Yeah, so the fountain should be like a Roman fountain. And here you see old bricks. I mentioned that Hundertwasser tried to reuse old material. So these are all bricks from way back monarchy time. And even he uses gravestones here. Because he thought, uh, yeah, death is part of life and shows again the cycle of life. And he reutilized, re so to speak, old plates from gravestones. And inside is the zodiacal signs. Hundertwasser uh, was really a pioneer in uh, the green movement. Way before there was a green party, he had green ideas. And uh, he was like a visionary, like a prophet, and often had the feeling that he was misunderstood in his time. This is an example of a house that Hundertwasser would not like, but he was allowed to make uh, this little serpent made of tiles over there, uh, at least to make it a little bit more beautiful. <laughs> and yeah, this is how he wants houses to be with many different shapes and forms and lots of colors and tiles and different windows. He calls them dancing windows. And of course, nature above all. He had foreseen that time would work on the facade and the colors would change a bit. And he said, this is beautiful when time leaves traces like a face with wrinkles. For the last 10-15 years he was very much, or I would say mainly, in New Zealand where he found his green island with uh, lots and lots of original nature and he had uh, bought there a big piece of ground, a valley, 
and he had planted there over 100,000 trees together with friends. So he had reforested a sheep farm and given back to nature what uh, man had taken away. And the tree here is his grave. He wanted to be buried on his own ground, so he arranged that with uh, New Zealand authorities. And he's buried here. Actually, the trees was uh, the tree, the tulip tree was planted on him, and he had the idea that he would survive in the tree and as a tree, and the roots would nourish themselves from his body. And that's why it says here, Frederick Hundertwasser, 2000. 2012 because the photo is taken in 2012.